So today we're looking at these two sets. They're both called Iron Man Armory. Obviously we've got Iron Man Armory, yeah, same here. But this isn't the first Iron Man Armory set. There was one that came out a few years prior to this, which was called Hall of Armor, which was a bigger version and compatible with this one here. Although this one opts for a different design style. This one is now retired and this one is still available, although it is retiring at the end of 2023. So look out for a good sale because the full retail price for this one is 80 pounds. And the full retail price for this one was 25 pounds. And on the back of the box, it shows you another alternative look at the set. This one is probably based off Iron Man 2, and this one's just kind of a generic Iron Man's armory. Inside the smaller Iron Man's armory set, you get two numbered bags and a large sticker sheet, but they are clear backed, so there's that to contend with. But there is only one instruction booklet, and it isn't very big. And in the larger Iron Man armory, you get four numbered bags, one sticker sheet, and one instruction booklet, which is a little larger, as to be expected. So for the 2020 version of Iron Man's Armory, we got Tony's Hot Rod, two identical AIM agents, but sometimes it's nice to have two villains that look the same to really bulk out an army. We've got Tony Stark, an Iron Man suit here, and one at the back, which is supposed to represent like a prototype armor from his, one of his early ones, but I'm not sure which version of the suit this is supposed to be. It doesn't say on the box, it just says Iron Man, but there you go. So if you know which version of the suit this is, let me know in the comments. And then we've got this empty crate which has Tony's toys and on the top is a giant burger and a coffee mug as well. But then also included is this printed little nano fig of an Iron Man suit, Tony's phone, some tools and some other. The stickers are really nice but they're mostly covered up, especially ones for the suits. You can just about make them out but they're kind of covered up by where the suits would stand. You can fit four suits in here and this little tool rack is removable because this was basically just an expansion pack to the 2019 Iron Man Hall of Armor which is just a bigger version of this set, which I do already have, but it's built away somewhere in storage. But yeah, this one got, connects straight onto that one. But as I said, the stickers are really nice, so they are kind of covered up. You can see them from the back, but then they're back to front, so it doesn't quite work, but it's nice that they're there. It's just a shame that you can't really see all the details. Another thing to note is that underneath these helmets, just clear heads, so obviously you can swap Tony out to put him in here. But this is the style of helmet where you can't flip it up to see Tony once he's inside. It's just a all-in-one, solid, very unpopular helmet, which I really don't like. So that was a bit of a shame. The suits can fit in there, but you have to take off all these accessories, and then they just balance on that bar there. They can just go on that little rack. Overall, I think the suits are pretty nice. They've got leg printing, but no arm printing, which really would have topped this all off. I think that would have just made it a bit better. Same with the prototype armor. The aim agents are fine without leg or arm printing, I think. It would have been nice, but I think the torso and the head printing just kind of works without them. Moving on to the 2022 version of Iron Man's Armoury. There's definitely a lot more to look at, of course. There is a lot more stuff here, but then again, it was a lot more expensive. You get eight minifigures, including a Tony Stark, Pepper Potts, Iron Man Suit Mark 85, War Machine, then Whiplash, Nick Fury, Mark 25, and there is also Mark 3, although as you can see it's kind of scattered around the workshop as it's being worked on, but you can put it all together to make a full Iron Man suit. And this whole set, apart from the Mark 85 armor, is all based off Iron Man 2. All of these Iron Man helmets, including the War Machine one, can open up, just like that, so they're different to the ones in the other set, but Whiplash, his helmet does not open up, so he still uses the old helmet mold Although at least he does get a hairpiece instead, so I guess that's kind of a fair trade-off. And the actual suit display storage bays are obviously a different design, but at least they're a lot more visible. You can actually see the stickers. They're brighter. They just kind of look a bit more modern and futuristic compared to the design in the old set. But this is pretty much it. Obviously, you can stack it. You can separate it to have side by side. But otherwise, you just got a bunch of random workshop stuff, which I guess is pretty cool, but... That's kind of it. And there are no prints in this set, so every detail you see on every screen and every panel is all a sticker. Showing some different things there. And the one underneath is pretty cool because, oh, I'm knocked onto the floor. It's showing Captain America's shield, which was seen in Iron Man 2. It's the little kind of unfinished prototype version that Tony Stark happened to have. So that's pretty nice to see. And then the panels on the suit bays are just showing some different Iron Man armors. Obviously, you've got Mark One reconstruction there, and then the Silver Centurion, and the Nanotech suit, which is this one here from Infinity War. Now, don't get me wrong; it's a nice-looking set, but is this worth eighty pounds? I really don't think so. You get three more minifigures in the set compared to the last one. 
you get this car, which could have been, let's say, for example, if this was a LEGO City set, sold by itself in a minifigure, maybe that's £9 or something. And then the other Iron Man armory set had four bays, this one has eight. That last set was £25 for five minifigures, this set was £80 for eight minifigures. Yeah, sure you get some extra parts, but I just, I don't see it. You know, the two bays, fine, let's say it's 50 quid for that and some of the accessories. All right, let's add on another £10, so up to £60. But is there £20 worth of stuff here that this other set doesn't have? Like, are these tables and workbenches really worth £20? I don't think so. Plus then, even if you do add it all up, you think you'd get like a bulk buy discount. So if you still want to get this set, it's still on shelves, but definitely wait for a sale. Do not pay full price for it. I certainly didn't. I waited until I think it was about £50. If you get it even cheaper, bonus. But yeah, some nice minifigures, but otherwise it's not all that. And as I mentioned stickers and there being no prints, there is one that I really wish was a print. It's these panels here, which are from obviously Iron Man 2, the Stark Expo board, which Tony takes apart from his office and puts the back of his car. In the film, there are four panels. In Lego, you only get three. The st it's stickers, it's fine. It was lining up. It looks pretty good. I mean, you can see it's slightly off. But then if I add the third and last panel in... Yeah, there is a gap. That's because the middle sticker just doesn't reach. So you kind of have a choice. Do you center it all and make it look like there's gaps in all of it? Or do you line it up on one side? That is probably the set's biggest down floor. I mean, it's just... Yeah, that... Not great, should have been prints, should have gone all the way up. But if you look at the sticker sheet, you can actually see where these stickers were and how the printing of the sticker continues onto the backing sheet, which, you know, that's missing detail that should have been on these stickers. And if they were on there, the gaps wouldn't be so bad. They probably wouldn't be there at all. So that was a real shame, Lego. Although these two sets have different design styles, they are still compatible with each other because they share the same connection points. So you can just connect them and make one big armory. And then the top rails from the new Star ones can also come attached as well. Now it is designed for the new Star ones to come apart, but they are only attached at the bottom, whereas the old one is attached at the top and bottom. So the new ones are a little bit more flimsy, but if you're careful, it shouldn't be too bad. And technically, you do have enough parts to put it all together to make a full circle. And if you add in a few other bits, I guess it could look like an arc reactor, but that's completely unintentional, right? And once everything's built, you can put it all together to come up with something like this. I put the two sets together to make a kind of more complete Iron Man's armory, and it does look really good. With all the suits and the different bays there, and the workshop things scattered around. And oh, that extra Tony, that's fine. He's just a life model decoy. It's all good. War Machine doesn't really fit in the bays because of its gun, so I left him on this kind of center display stand, and it works. And then we've got some of the tools and accessories over on this side. Two of them are pretty much the same, just slightly different designs. And then we've got some more of the workshop stuff with... Oh no, Tony's just realised Whiplash has joined forces with AIM and they're attacking the workshop. Meanwhile, Nick Fury and Pepper Potts are in the garage just having a chat. But overall, it does look really nice together now that I've done it. But yeah, maybe not worth the full retail price. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.